All right, welcome back everyone to LearningSysAdmin.com. This is part three of our beginner's guide to MySQL. And today we'll be discussing the update command. So again, if you'd like the text version of this video, please go to the description down below. There should be a link to LearningSysAdmin.com where it will have a full text uh, transcript of what goes on during this video. There will also be a script that you can run to run the commands in this video as well. Um, so right now, we are going to switch to the database we created in uh, video one. If you have not done so, please go to video one and uh, create the database. If not, you can follow along on screen. So we just typed in the use command, use my company, the previous database that we made, and we're going to add an employee. So we're going to use our insert into command, table name, employees. And we're gonna say first name, last name, phone number, and your birth. All right, and we're gonna say values, Steven, Simons, uh, 555, 1234567 is his phone number, and 1978, he was born. So just a reminder, insert into, table name is employees, first name, last name, phone number, and your birth is the columns, the fields, and then we say values, and we put in quotes the values that we want to add for this new employee. Okay, query okay, one row affected, perfect. So he went into the database, let's just make sure. Select star from employees. So remember the star is a wildcard, it means all. And there he is. So John Smith and C Stephen Simons are in the database. Note that last video we inserted Jane Doe, she got an ID of two, all right? And now that we deleted her and we added Stephen Simons in, the auto increment has added one to Jane's ID since she was the last one in the database, in this table. So Stephen doesn't get an ID of two, he gets an ID of three. And that will prevent conflicts because when you're linking multiple tables together, you know, maybe some of Jane's information is still in there using her ID two we don't want to give Steven that ID. So right now, let's say Steven got his phone number changed. So we're going to use a new command called the update command. So we're going to type in update and then the table name, which is employees. We're going to say set phone number equal to one, two, three, five, 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 four, five, six, seven, where phone number equals 555-123-4567. All right, so what that's saying is that's saying update the table name employees, set the phone number field equal to 123-555-4567, where currently the phone number field is 555-123-4567. So we run that, query okay, one row is matched, one row affected, perfect. So we know that Steven's phone number was changed. To confirm that, we can just select all from employees. And Steven's phone number has been changed. Note that it used to be 555-123 and now it's 123-555. All right. So now, note how John Smith does not have his phone number or year of birth in here. So instead of running two update commands to update both fields, we can put both in one statement. So let's do update, table name employees, set phone number equal to 111-222-3333, um, comma, year of birth equal to 1985, where last name equals Smith. Query OK, one row affected, perfect. So now if we do a select all from employees, we see, yes, John's phone number and your birth has been updated, and we did that all in one simple command. So if you want to join, if you want to update multiple fields, you can just put a comma in between them, and you're done. Uh, now this is bad practice, and we will talk about in future videos, when you say, where last name equals Smith. And why that is, is say that you have two employees with the last name Smith. This will 
update both people's phone number and your birth. All right. So how databases should be to be mo uh, the most efficient they can be is to say where ID equals and then the employee's ID. That's why it's important to have an ID field, especially if you're talking about people or assets, anything like that. You need to have an ID field, something that is going to be unique for each entry. All right, that sums it up for this video. Remember, for a text walkthrough of the commands that we just went through, see the description below. Um, also, a script that runs these commands for you, also in the description below. If you like this video, please like this video. If, you, uh, if this video helped you, please like this video. Subscribe if you like to, and check out our website at learningsysadmin.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.